Today we're going to be going over the which subclass. Which one? This this subclass. Yeah, but which subclass? The the, the which subclass. Yeah, but which subclass? But the one like that's right here today. Which one? Welcome to the Homebrew Crew. I'm Tony. This is Sean. And today we're reviewing which class? The witch subclass. Ah, now I get it. Yeah. Okay. So this one's cool. Uh, essentially, this is your typical, you know, maybe it's the pointy hat witch. Or maybe it's the, the witch that has, you know, it's nice and the lady down the street. There's a lot of ways you can flavor this one. Mrs. Anderson, the one that smelled of patchouli That's all right. the time. Yeah, her. Mm, I got it. Now, this is the subclass of the wizard, and this is from D&D Beyond. Mm -hmm. The uh, creator of this one, though, is... Okashido. Okashido. Yes, very nice. All right. Um, so there's a bit of a description as to what kind of witch you can be, um, but we go into the details of the class features. Now, off the bat at level two, it's actually where you get your talisman. And the talisman can be a lot of different things, and they do a lot of different things depending on what you pick. But each one of them has something specific in uh, in, in nature that they all have together. Yeah. And it's the fact that they have a certain number of health and a certain number of AC to it. Yeah, so the AC of your talisman is uh, t uh, 20, and then the AC, the HP is equal to half of your HP. Okay, so your enough. talisman grows with you? Yeah, basically, yeah, which is kind of nice. Right, that's cool. But the talisman has some very unique things that happen if the talisman is destroyed. Oh, yeah, so it's it's like this got this bond to you. So if it ends up getting destroyed, I like that it's described as a spectacular display of magical power, but you also lose half your hit points. Yeah, it, it's kind of a weird thing with it. So any spells you have going uh, when this thing it, it cracks, stop, and whatever. And you can't cast spells either. Right, you're, you're done. And 50% of your maximum HP, yeah. not 50% of the health you have left, 50% of your maximum HP. Yeah, so this HP. could kill you very easily depending on where you're at, so just right. be careful. Now, you can restore it to hit points and create a new one mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff too, but the thing we want to get into is the types that you can actually do. Yeah, so like, for example, like the amulet uh, gives you a plus one to AC whenever you're wearing it. Uh, the anthem is interesting uh, because it's essentially a weapon, like a dagger or something small. It does 1d6 damage. But it acts as your, you know, your spell focus as well. Right, right. And uh, attacks with the anthem have a spell attack bonus to it mm -hmm. on your attack rolls. Yeah. So like, use your spell attack as your modifier for your attack. Right. Which, which is, is kind of cool. Yeah, this is very good. Um, you can also have a focus like a, you know, like a wand or a staff, and it increases your spell attack and spell DC by one. You can have that fancy hat. Yeah. You know, like some of those witches wear the hats like and that. And it actually gives you proficiency in two skills. Yep. And or you can have a ring, you know, a little ring with an eyeball or something like that with it and that one basically just allows you to speak read and write uh celestial abyssal sylvan and draconics which just... is great because you know there could have been something very overpowered with the ring because you can hold stuff too but like it doesn't really do anything that's game breaking right the only thing is is still your spell casting focus so that uh if you're having it in your you hand, free whatever, hands you which is free really hands. good but i would still argue that you would have to I, I think you should still have to drop whatever you're holding in order to do that. <laughs> um, but those are the first things that you get with that. And then you get into something called the evil eye. Yeah, so evil eye is basically kind of that witch glare. Um, so like that, get, that's evil eye. Right. Uh, so any creature within 60 feet, you can kind of give them a glare, and they have disadvantage on any attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. You're literally like giving them a little, little, little witch look, so which is great. Witch look? This this one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's that's something that's not too game breaking mm -hmm. and really kind of cool. You get a shorter long rest with it, mm -hmm. uh, allows you to give that disadvantage. It's kind of a little bit like the divination wizard type a little thing, bit. a little bit, yeah. Uh, but you're not rolling for them, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, then you get witch's mind. Now I thought this was a little bit underwhelming, but I'm also kind of cool with it. Yeah, it gives you immunity to being charmed. You can't uh, can't be put to sleep by magic. Uh, we have races and class features that already do this, mm -hmm. um, but just in case if you don't have it, um, it's you know you have it as an option, and it kind of makes sense. Again, you're a witch, you know you're you're kind of good up in the head, so. I, I would uh, I would take it a step further, and if you played a elf with that, mm. I would just make it that you can't sleep. Like right. you're just like insomnia. Yeah, exactly. You know? Just like always <laughs> up. Um, but then here comes the real meat and potatoes of this class with the witch's conveyance and the witch's house. Witch's conveyance is at eleventh level. Mm -hmm. You spend seven days creating this item, and it could seven be a days. It's seven days. Yes, seven days. Don't watch the video. No. Oh, um, <laughs> so it's important to note that it has to be something that you can mount, mm -hmm. and it gives you a flying speed of forty feet. But it's just great because it gives so many 
plus some examples as to what you can actually make and you know dm's description uh, discretion at well but like there's so many right. things you could do with that yeah because you know you you're normally like tied to like a broom of flying yeah. which is which yeah. is cool mm -hmm. which is cool um but the <laughs> neat thing about this is that they give you like little options for that i mean you can do uh, a giant mortar uh, uh a cauldron a pony sized swan which yeah. i think is interesting <laughs> Again, uh, giddy up, Swan. Right, because again, uh, you could be the Wicked Witch, or you could be that like fairy-like witch. So yeah, it gives so you a lot of options. It's really kind of cool. Giant bat, things like that. But essentially, all it is is you're getting a flying speed. Yeah, it operates like the talisman, so it has an AC of twenty and half the health. But it's cool because even though it can only hold yourself, you can actually shrink it down to a six-inch figurine. That way, like, oh, all right, you're we're parked now, and then you kind of take it, and you put it in your little knapsack, and you know, go off on your other adventures. It also makes it really easy to misplace, which. <laughs> are leaving these things everywhere like they lose exactly. their keys you know kind of a thing thing yeah and um, you can even summon it to you so you can actually like kind of like have it come back to you if you if it's a little far away that's still really cool mm -hmm. it, it takes the flying broom and puts it into a yeah. new perspective yeah, something exactly. really kind of cool with that um but uh the witch's house is what you get at 14th level yeah so imagine the the house with the chicken legs uh, beneath it or, or just like a hut you know or things like that and this is really interesting because gameplay wise there's a lot of uses for it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really do anything that's going to break your campaign or anything like that. But it's a cool feature that you get. So it takes you seven days to make this house. There's a lot of seven days in this. Yeah, but yes. I know. Uh, but it's it's the same basic principle as uh, Mordenkainen's mm -hmm. Magnificent Mansion. Yeah, and essentially the way that spell works is like you literally create like this very nice house. There's food in it, mm -hmm. and you can like all your buddies can like you know sleep in there and rest safely. So it's like a better like tiny hut spell. Yeah, and it, it provides food for you that mm -hmm. uh, regenerates every twenty four hours and doesn't spoil. Uh, once per week, you can take a, make a ritual to move it. Yeah, so that's one of the things about this one too. It's a little better than the Magnificent Mansion because it has an unlimited duration. So it could stay there for the eternity of time if you wanted to. And it doesn't use up a spell slot. Yeah, Magnificent exactly. Mansion is a seventh level spell. Mm -hmm. You don't need that. So this is a, a well-rounded thing. Now we go through D&D Beyond quite a bit. Uh, and oftentimes there's things that are like super overpowered. And that's why we normally go towards things on the DMs Guild mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. Uh, but we, we do like reviewing free content for you guys as well. And that's something that you can can find here uh we'll provide the link in the description below it's just in the the subclasses section of the homebrew yeah and uh that'll be like down here somewhere so it's really good if you're looking for something that's halloween themed or if you're looking to play you know that kind of witch character um it's nice because you get some actual gameplay mechanic features but like the witch's conveyance in the witch's house really adds and flourishes that character that you're trying to create in your campaign it's definitely more of a, a homebrew kind of concept yeah than it definitely. is uh, like a full you know class kind of thing mm -hmm. but we really really enjoyed this one there are a few good witches on uh D, D beyond as well there's one that encompasses uh covens and using spells yeah. and being able to share spells it was really cool but there's a few things in it that just kind of make it overpowered this is the one that we like the most so if you've got something you want to send us go right ahead and send it to us right down here at dmbrewcrew at gmail.com we'd be happy to take a look but not everything makes the channel so we do the best we can yeah. And if you want to support the channel, you can always go down to our Patreon and uh, help us out with a couple bucks here and there. You do get some behind the scenes footage as well and it helps, you know, with the set and everything. And you can go to DMs Guild and pick up some of our content. We do have the Briarthorn race that is currently out and we have some upcoming classes and races that you can expect on our DMs Guild page as well. So definitely stay tuned for that. And remember, the best campaigns are always the ones that are home brewed. So until next time, keep, keep brewing. brewing.